Hello, RSU faculty. This is Troy Gerard, your instructional designer. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through the student preview and the student view mode in Blackboard. Stay tuned. Once a student has logged into Blackboard, they are taken to the activity stream. Now, we know that the activity stream is comprised of all the content of our courses uh, based on due date, based on when things were added. It's kind of a at a glance type of view. Students will then go to their courses page or their courses uh, tab. This student just will happen to select on the card view. They can toggle this view by this icon right here. And when they're in this view, they can go to their particular course and view the material. Now, when they click on a course, they're only going to see the content that you have made visible to the student. So if they're looking at your course, all of the content here in the content uh, section is only viewable based on what you, the instructor, has showed them. So in this instant, we can see that they can see all of these modules and they can click on these modules and start viewing this content. If the progress tracker is turned on, which is indicated over here on the left side of your course, the student can see that the progress tracker is on and they can follow their progress by accessing each one of these items and will show if it's being completed or not. So they can mark it as complete if they want to, they can mark it as start and see their progress. We can see that students have accessed certain things based on if that arrow is checked or if it is uh, kind of a partially half full circle, uh, they can click on this and access the content within these pages. Now, once they are on a page, they can simply move through the content by clicking these arrows either on the top or right, or as they move through, they can go back with the top left arrow. So now they can move through these individual pages that we have within our module seamlessly right here in this navigation window. If they are wanting to scroll down, they can see more content. At the very bottom, it tells them how to navigate through this uh, box here, it says, navigate to the syllabus using the right arrow, go back to the previous page with the left arrow, or hit the X to return to the main navigation. So they can simply click this X, and now they are back to where they started on this main navigation. So take in mind when you're building out your course, you're thinking about how is the student navigating my course, and what are they seeing? Uh, I want to go now to an assignment. We're going to move into module one. We have some overview pages. We have a module uh, discussion. We have learning activities, formative assessments, assignments. And I'm gonna simply go to the overview page and navigate through this uh, module as a student would. So they're seeing your overview page. They're then clicking on the next tab, which is our lecture. We have some recordings here. We go to our module readings. This is telling our student what is due as far as reading material is concerned for module one. We then want to move on to the next thing, which is the module one discussion. When they select this discussion, it's going to take him to the discussion post. They can then simply complete this discussion post by responding here in this box. They can view other students' responses by scrolling down. If the student has posted, they will see them here. And now they complete this discussion post accordingly. Take in mind that students are gone through a training course specifically to teach them how to complete discussions, how to upload assignments, all in Blackboard. After they've completed this discussion, they can move on to the learning activity. And this learning activity is an assignment. And the first phase of viewing this assignment is actually going to be in a pop-up window over here. Now, this pop-up window is comprised of all of the details 
and settings that you as the instructor has set when creating this, uh, this learning activity. We're going to take a look at this in the instructor view here in a minute, but just know that any time that a student is accessing an assignment, it is first going to be in this pop-up window. It's going to tell them how many attempts they have, what is the due date, is it safe assign uh, enabled, which means uh, is our plagiarism checker turned on, how many attempts do they actually have, does it have a rubric, they can see this, as well as see the description of this assignment. Once they want to access the assignment, they click View Assessment, and then it will open up into the page that you are familiar of seeing with the details on the right and the content on the left. They can simply submit something by adding something in this text box. If you have a quiz or a test, they will answer the questions within this box here, and they can complete the assignment. Notice that the submit button is grayed out as well as the save and close is grayed out. Students cannot submit or save and close if they have not added anything into this box. Once they have added anything into this box, whether it's a file or text, so I'm going to write, uh, you know, text here. And now I can see that these are available for me to submit. So note that students cannot submit an assignment if there is nothing in this box. If they have not answered any questions, they cannot submit it. So that kind of combats the whole, well, I submitted it, but nothing came through. Well, that's actually incorrect. Nothing can come through if you haven't put it in this box. You cannot submit it without adding content. So just note that once we have actually uh, put some text here in this box and hit submit, it's going to ask them, do they want to submit it? We're going to hit yes as the student. And then it gives them a submission receipt. It says your submission was successful. Here's the details. Here's your confirmation number. Note that this is actually retained in Blackboard, as well as it emails the student their submission receipt. They can download another copy here, or they can hit close, and they can move on to the next item. To move on to the next item, they simply are going to use these arrows again to navigate their course. The next item was an assignment or a formative assessment. You can see that it's still in this pop-up window because it's a gradable item. They're only going to see it in this pop-up window until they hit view assessment. If the assessment is timed, it then starts their time when they click view assessment. They can go through and complete this. Again, they can't complete it without adding things in the submission box or answering questions that you have produced here. So that's kind of how a student is navigating your course as they see content either on the main page or they see it in the pop-up windows as the assignment. And that way you kind of understand how they are navigating through your course while you're building your course, you can understand, you know, hey, they're gonna see this as a pop-up window. I wanna put my content in the settings and in that description box versus in the body of the actual assignment itself. Now that we've taken a look at Blackboard in the eyes of the student, I wanna move back to the instructor view and show you some features of the student preview setting within Blackboard. Looking at the same course in Blackboard in the eyes of the instructor, you can see that there's various icons that the student won't see. You can see that there's links over here on the left that they may not have. And they also have the student preview mode up here at the top. This is a mode that allows you to see what your course looks like in the eyes of the student. Now, when we access this student preview, it says, hey, we are about to create a student preview. Do you want to start? It says that you can submit attempts, you can post discussion, you can view course material. You can actually move through your course as a student without changing any of the settings within the actual course itself. So I'm gonna hit start preview. 
You can see that I have a welcome to student preview mode here at the top. And now we are looking at our course in the eyes of a student. We can see that we have limited links over here on the left. Some of the icons are gone uh, here for editing modules, moving them, that sort of thing. So now we can go through and navigate uh, our course as a student. Now take in mind, once we start looking at these items as a student, we can scroll down and see them as a student. We can move through these arrows as a student. We can go to each individual page as a student. Take note that it actually is going to track your progress as that student. So if we go into a discussion and we complete this discussion as our student preview and we hit post, it actually submitted this progress or this discussion post as our student preview. We can see Troy Gerard underscore preview user. So this is uh, me and saying right here, here's our test, uh, our, our test student mode. That's what the mode I was in last. Uh, and here's the instructor itself. So I'm seeing that I've responded. I can go to the various pages within this. I've, I've made a discussion post here. Uh, this one says that it has a gradient rubric. The max points is zero. So now if I go out of this, I can see that I've actually completed this as a student. If you are wanting to edit this discussion post in the uh, instructor view, you actually have to reset your preview. So we can go up to the top and we can find this icon. We can select this. We can view the grade book that's going to allow us to view the grade book and all of the submissions can show us the progress that our student preview has made. Uh, or we can exit preview, go back to our instructor view and see that this discussion was now posted by that preview. So just as a student would submit that discussion, we're actually seeing that that discussion was completed by our student preview mode. But in order to edit anything after that, we want to reset the preview. Okay, so I'll actually hit exit preview, go back to my instructor mode. I can then go to my grade book and I can see that an item needs to be graded based on the completion that student has made. Okay, so I can go and look at my discussions. There is a purple icon saying that there is one that's new. So I will select that and I can see that the student has made this post, I can then give them a grade and I can see that it was made by our preview user. Now, if I wanted to edit this discussion post, it's not going to allow me to edit this item, whether it's a discussion post or a graded item, say a test or an assignment. I have to go back to student preview, enter student preview, and I need to re uh, reset this student preview. So hit reset. It says all course activity in the student preview will be removed. That's okay. I want all of that to be reset anyway. And I hit reset. Now it does reset all of the progress that that preview made, but you are still in student preview. So you actually have to exit student preview. Once you've exited student preview, it takes you back to the instructor view. You can then go to that discussion, make the necessary changes. If we go to this discussion very quickly, we can see that the submission is there as an anonymous. We can actually delete this. We can delete any reply that we have. We can go to grades and see that nobody has participated in this. So now we are ready to edit the course as needed. Again, you can just jump back and forth between student preview mode, but the most important thing to remember is we need to reset the preview mode every time that we're gonna wanna make changes to our course. Uh, that way we're actually able to do so. Another thing to take in note is if we go to our roster here on the left, we can see that it actually put a person in our roster as a student preview. So we can see that this person is a student. They are on our roster. 
That means that they will show up in our grade book. If we go to student list, we can see that this person is in the grade book. We can see when they last accessed the course. Uh, you notice that there isn't a student ID associated with it because it's connected to your account as the instructor. I hope this video was helpful. If you need any additional help with your Blackboard course, feel free to reach out to me or go to help.blackboard.com. Thanks for watching.